I think the plan is like, yeah, he missed all of his senior year with that injury at Collins Hill, but I think he's someone I would expect uh, that they're going to try and get in early and often uh, with McAllen Castles and how they how they go about it. But I'm also curious if McAllen can play that Princeton Fant role where he can be um, in the backfield and he's going to be used in pass pro and stuff like that. It would be a like, goal line guy because um, that wasn't really Jacob Warren's deal. So I'm, uh, I'm curious to see who fills that role, I guess, a little bit more than I am Jacob Warren coming back. But like you said, depth is good and uh, he knows the system maybe he's just the tight end coach too de facto they don't hire anybody they just make uh, jacob warren the tight end coach yeah, how about just... that for an nil bonus <laughs> there you go um i don't know i just it's really interesting that no, it's just there's no urgency really they're just chilling like everything's just like oh i'll figure it out when we get there um and then you have the the halsey stuff ryan where he gets promoted, I think they said it was done like in mid-September, or excuse me, mid-September, mid-December when he signed the deal, and they just didn't want to make a big deal out of it before the bowl came and all that. But um, ultimately, were you surprised that it was Joey Halsley, and do you think it's the right move to just promote from within here? I would have been surprised if it wasn't Joey Halsley, especially mm. considering, to your point about when it was done, how little traction there seemed to be on it for the whole month after Alex Golish left. It, it just seemed like the obvious choice, and... Yeah, I think it probably is the right deal. And I like the way they're going about it, where Heifel says, I'm going to call plays next year. And he's going to grow as a play caller. And he'll grow into that role, just like Alex Golish grew into that role. But uh, I think you see the comfortability uh, that Heifel has with him. But at the same time, Heifel having a lot of confidence in himself and not putting too much on a 35-year-old who's really only been in a on-field assistant coach for three years in his coaching career this isn't a guy that's been a journeyman who's been a quarterback's coach for 15 years so it's a big increase in responsibility but he's been with Josh Heibel for a really long time clearly there's a lot of trust there clearly he has a lot of trust with his whole offensive staff because he's brought so many along with him from Central Florida and obviously he promoted Kelsey Pope from within last year when Cody Burns went to the NFL so wasn't surprising to me. I like the fact that Heupel's going to call plays next year and be a little bit more aggressive in that front. So no surprise, and I think probably the right move for Tennessee to make. What do you think, Ethan? Yeah, I, I am right there with Ryan where I thought it was it was the obvious choice just because of the familiarity, the trust that Ryan was talking about because he knows he's been with Heupel for 15 years from Oklahoma to Utah State. I mean, you name it. He's He's been right there with him, not necessarily as – his offensive coordinator, but he, he knows the offense. He knows what Heupel's trying to do, and it, that's that's an easy call. You don't want to get someone from the outside who may have the talent, may have the the know-how of, of an offensive coordinator that can come in and say, I have this XYZ experience in leading this offense to whatever. Or you can have a guy like like Halsey who's been under him this entire time. You can have Heupel say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the plays anyway. And I – it just seems obvious that you promote from within. It's it's something I feel like he's going to be doing a lot moving forward as well. I mean, it's just keep moving guys up and then move them in from the bottom, and it'll just be like that. Just because I, I saw a, a Tennessee beat writer, I can't remember who it is off the top of my head, but they said just the way this offense is structured, how quick it is, how, how I guess, complex it is, it's just so much easier to get guys that know what they're talking about and have been under Hypel and know what he's trying to do for the past five years than – get a new guy who who may be a veteran in it, but doesn't quite know the, the idiosyncrasies of the offense. Yeah. And I wonder too, if like you mentioned the Utah state reference, I like, uh, do we think Matt Wells or Anthony Tucker or Joe John Finley makes the most sense as the tight end coach? Do you think it's going to be someone outside of those three, Ryan, or do you think that's where you would probably guess? <laughs> it's a tough question. I mean, that's where I'd probably guess. Cause what I said just a minute ago about it, it yeah. seems to always be guys that Hypel's familiar with. To me, if I was Josh Heupel, I'm looking outside the coaching tree and I'm trying mm. to – it's a tight ends coach. Yeah. Get somebody in there who can recruit. Get somebody in there with Southern ties who's got great recruiting pedigree. That's what I would do. It's hard for me to say that's my prediction just given how much Heupel on the offensive side has steered towards hiring guys to know his system and he knows well. Yeah. I, I could I could agree that with that, especially because, I mean, uh, eventually you got to get new guys. You can't just keep <laughs> – at some point you got to get someone coming in so you can promote them. And tight end coach, I, I feel like, uh, agreed with Ryan. That's about where that would start. Yeah, I mean, Clemson's dealing with this right now. You can promote – there's <laughs> there, you can promote from within sometimes, but you don't want to only be promoting from within. I mean, look mm -hmm. at uh, New England too. Uh, new England's going through some issues now. 
uh, just Belichick not branching out and not uh, going with outside hires has finally come back to really fight him with this offense. Um, Ethan, when you look at the portal and where Tennessee is targeting this weekend, it looks like Dante Thornton and the DT from uh, Arizona State are pretty good, pretty good shots of being balls by. (laughs) 